Hey, Destiny Generation. What does it mean to make a gift of yourself? Jason Everett is going to tell us. At the next Marie Ellen Dom's Inn. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Destiny Generation. You gotta go out. Know your faith. You gotta know it to share it. We have to let everyone know. Let me tell you about it. Share the faith. Don't you please. know that my faith is important to me? It's our destiny. We are the Destiny Generation. Welcome to Marie Allen Dom's Zen. I'm Greg Becker, and I'm here with a very special guest once again. But before I tell you who that is, I'd like to tell you about this. It's a booklet entitled Pure Love and we're discussing this booklet. And it's all about the church's beautiful teaching and God's wonderful plan for human sexuality and relationships between men and women. And to talk with us today, our special guest, Mr. Jason Everett. Hi, Greg. Welcome. Thank you for having me. And of course, the show wouldn't be complete without Father Kevin Barrett, our chaplain. Nice to be here, and nice to know that Jason is actually the author of this booklet. Did I fail to say that? I didn't hear it, although maybe I... We'll just we'll underscore that. that we're privileged <laughs> to have take the author forward. of the book here, too. This is a little booklet that you can get by contacting us, and we're going to jump right in right now and start talking about it. Pure love. We spoke in earlier programs that it's about a gift, a gift of self. Tell me, you go out, you speak all over the country, thousands of young people every year, mm. um, thousands even at a crack sometimes. Mm. Do young people, do, does our world in general know what real love is? No. And I was listening to a radio show in San Diego, and the host said, uh, we're going to talk about love. Call in 1 800 da -da 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 -da, and tell us what you think love is. And then one guy calls up and says, Love, man, it's just when you see her, just the world is beautiful and it's so exciting and it's just great. You start and, writing poetry. And, yeah, yeah and, the guy, and the host says, Right on, man, that's love. Next caller, number two, what's love? And dude, love is just like, man, it's just this feeling. You can't explain, you don't know when it happens, and then wham, it's there, and it's just the best thing in the world. And I felt so so sorry because uh, you know I've had th that concept of love for a long time before I realized that love is not a feeling it's not an emotion it doesn't land on you like like a bird poop you just walk on just hits you and you're like whoa oh my goodness you know where did that come from you know uh, that's the concept modern concept of love is just it's so sudden you don't know where it comes from and then sometimes it just disappears and you move on um, and, and it's so sad because this is why most marriages end in the first two years that's when most divorces happen in two years because reality sets in because love Love is a decision for the good of the beloved. And our Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, says, the greater the feeling of responsibility you have for your beloved, the more real love there is. The, the less responsible I feel for her, the more it's egoism. I love me, and I want you, instead it's of satisfying. I love you, and I want what's best for you. And so real love is a decision for the good of the beloved. You know, I'm thinking, too, that that question, what is God? St. John the Evangelist had a pretty good answer for what is God, or what is love. He said, God is love. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we know that from faith, that if we, if we are to describe God who is the source of all and everything, our being and everything that exists, one word that sums his being is love, that he loves us, he created everything in love, he is love. Uh, that's a tremendous difference from these other false ideas of what, of what love is. I mean, in, in Jesus, of course, revealing God to us uh, in a human nature, he shows us, too, that love is a gift. It's a life poured out for the beloved, as you said, and his, the image that he's left us uh, on Calvary on the cross shows us that you know, love, love is a gift. It's a sacrifice. It's a pouring out for the beloved. So much did he love his father that he wanted to repair for our sins. So much does he love us. He doesn't want to see sin take us to eternal ruin. So he shows that love is this pouring out for the beloved. This is real, true love. And it's, it can feel good sometimes, but other yeah. times it's going to really hurt. Yeah. You know, he didn't feel good uh, on Calvary. Yeah, because we can't measure the greatness of the love by the intensity of the feelings or by the presence of pain. Because if love is contingent on feelings and feeling good and pleasure, um, and then the adulterous man is very, very loving. But the war hero who gave his life for his fellow soldiers, that guy's a scoundrel. And so we can't define love by feelings or by emotions or this or that, but really by, by the decision for the good. So what is it then that I remember as a young person, gosh, you know, you're attracted to someone, you know, they kind of like you, you know, you're just young and, and uh, that's very exciting, you know, and the, the emotions, gosh, there's no lack of emotion at those times. 
And it's no kidding. I mean, when you are in love, yes, there are emotions that accompany that. Mm -hmm. And yes, you, you know, the birds sound chirpier and the sun is brighter, the grass is greener, and, and you're writing poetry for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. But um, so how is a, is a young person to really understand it when you, because that's, it's a, it takes a certain level of maturity, doesn't it? Yeah. And we need to, you know, really step back and maybe take to prayer, you know, if, if our concept of love has been jaded by the media and by these, all these other things, because when you deliver this to the teens, they know it's the real. They said, yeah, that is love, you know. True. You know, another thing that bears pointing out, I suppose, is I remember when I had that puppy love, you know, you're like, this is it, she's the one, you know, I'm 14 years old, but I know it, or whatever the case may be. You know, there's no way. If you came up to me, to, I, I had my little sister, I've got four sisters, two brothers. I remember at one point, she was a young girl, but she uh, had met a very nice young fellow and they were spending some time together, very nice relationship. And I had a great relationship with her, my little sister. As a matter of fact, when we were young, if there was a problem, like she fell down and scraped her knee, she'd come to me mm -hmm. before she would go to my parents. You know, mom was very busy doing the other things, and the older kids would sometimes help out. And we had developed a special relationship. And she looked at me one day, and she said, Greg, if you told me to break up with John, I'd laugh in your face. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, saying, this is it. He's the one. I know it. There's no way mm -hmm. you're going to convince me otherwise. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? She's, get, she's actually getting married this August, and it ain't John. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for young people to realize that that emotion, the very, very strong emotion mm -hmm. that they're feeling for that other person, particularly at a young age, is not love. Don't confuse that with love. It's a good thing, and it can be part of love, mm -hmm. but it is not love. Mm -hmm. In its essence. You know what it goes back to, too, Greg? I think it, that there's a little bit of a confusion that God does place pleasure in things that he wants us to do. In other, you know, we, we feel good when we sleep because we need sleep. We, f we enjoy eating. The purpose of eating is not just to have pleasure. The purpose of eating is to nourish ourselves. The purpose of sleeping is to restore ourselves. The purpose of drinking, you know, we, we all experience a pleasure doing these things because God wants them to be done. They're necessary for our nature. With love and that spiritual faculty, yes, there are good feelings associated with it, and there are pleasures associated. He wants that. That's a blessed encouragement to enter into love. But what we're saying is that it's not simply feeling good, as you're trying to point out, because at many times you're not going to feel good in loving, you're, because it's going to be a real call to sacrifice myself, as you pointed out with a nice analogy, for the beloved, and do th something that doesn't make me feel good at all. In fact, it may even hurt me. Right. And as we even brought out, you know, to lay down my life for my friends, as Jesus said, no greater love is there than to give your life to make the ultimate sacrifice and of course Jesus uh, speaking from his own experience of uh, leading us where he's already gone you know in terms of the ultimate love right. is to ultimate give love. yourself totally love is not a feeling it's not an emotion it doesn't land on you like like a bird pooping